I'd like to propose a toast to our wonderful colleague Catherine, who wrote yet another excellent story of current interest, which made a great impact That's once awesome. more. Catherine, yes, please absolutely. keep up the good work. What? Thank Congrats. you. Thanks Here's a lot. To you. I promise Cheers. I'll do my best. Great Congrats. Job. It's yes, that's right. Since we went out together. We should thank Catherine. It was her who suggested that we have lunch together. Yes, that's really wonderful. <laughs> I said yes immediately. I have been working so hard these past few days. <laughs> you shouldn't put the good things. <laughs> you bought a new bike. Yeah, I would love to go on in vacation. Yes, I agree. We forgot I such a thing existed at all. <laughs> Let's drink to your new Did bike. You ride and travel thank anyway? you. Maybe someday. Well, I was just joking, but thank you anyway. Okay. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay. I was hoping to fly this year. Wow. I've been wanting to go to wow. Africa, but my parents still won't let me travel alone. So, yeah. It's hard when you're the only child in the family. It's not that difficult to understand. Yeah, but they can't cope well with the changes. You. This year, I would probably have no <laughs> vacation at all. That yes. Too bad. That's why when I get a chance, I'd really like to take a vacation. Oh, right. I already had one, but I want more. <laughs> so where are you planning to go? For me, anywhere as long as it's paid. <laughs> you look pretty. Guys, I paid my bill. Thank okay. you, sir. So are you free tonight? Tonight? Something new came up, that's why every day, and everybody's it's loaded with work. You know. There's no time to rest. We're Don't busy around the clock. Just for now. It will be quieter in winter. You'll be able to go to warm countries by then. Well, I'm sure you'll have fun. Everyone but me. You'll be fine. Dad! <laughs> Why did she scream? Excuse me. What's going on? <gasps> Do you no, mean no, the no, joke no, about that. the medicine? Well, which one then? You said you needed a pathologist. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I mean a neurologist. Oh, now you definitely need a pathologist. <laughs> You're such a cynic, doctor. Hi, Hi Helen. Helen. What about the cynics? Let the people know that we make up these stories ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. Are you all right? Helen, everything will be fine. Yes, of course. Why don't we catch up later, okay? Don't say I'm wrong. I'm not saying anything. Leukemia is not a death sentence. Sometimes it is. Don't say that. She'll be fine. You have yes, to believe me. Everything will be fine. You'll see. Excuse me. How are you? I'm fine. Verity is a tough girl. She goes after her mom. She's not my mom. Let's go. We don't have to tell everybody that I am not your mother. Especially in that tone. But it's true. You're my stepmom. You're right. So what? It's just a word. Well, you're right. But you know, some words can be a bit hurtful. Yeah, of course. When Dad married you, he didn't think that he could be hurting someone else. And I even get scolded for calling things by their proper names. Your dad married me three years after your mother had died. So what? He was single all those years because of you. Do you understand that? Is that a question? Yes. And one more thing. Do you think a person can be happy alone? No idea. It depends. I think I can. Okay, listen. Even if you weren't sick, you would still be acting up like this to me. Am I right? Did you really think your dad had betrayed your mother when he married me? But you know what? I love your father. And I love you too. You can sharpen your teeth on me as much as you want. But that won't stop me from putting you on your feet. Nothing will stop me, even your cynicism. I'm impressed. Great. That's all we needed. I'll call for help.
How much longer? A car is just like a woman. It needs money. And care. No? Mine likes it hard. Give me the key. You mean your wife or your car? Actually, both of them. Guys, ah. you can talk about women later. What's wrong with the car? Listen, the car needs washing. But I would advise dumping I it. I am serious. I'm being serious, too. Of course, we will fix it a little for now. But I can't guarantee you. He's right. You might have to buy a new car. Are you sure? Yes, just get a car loan. Well, it's just easy for you to say that. Can you pass the wrench, please? Uh-huh. Well, <laughs> I've just won five million. Woohoo! Wow, that's, that's the money great. that you need to buy a new car. It's just a scam. Helen, will this take any longer? J just wait a minute, okay? Thank goodness, we're almost done. On the firing line. Report when ready to fire. Ready to fire. Ready to fire. Ready to fire. Fire! Hi. How is he? You will see. Igor, it's better today, am I right? Of course it is. You're getting better every day. Listen, your wife called earlier. She's worried you didn't answer. I said you're at the shooting range. Everything is fine. Thanks a lot. I'll just go ahead and call her now, huh? Oh. <sighs> I feel sorry for him. He still didn't recover from the shot. It's okay, he just needs more time. I'll put him in the office to do paperwork for now. Mm hmm Oh, your Prince Charming is coming. Hi, Tim. Hello there. Uh-huh. Farya, how are you? I brought the lecture and thesis notes on political science so we can study it now. I'm sorry, not today. Do you need any help? Just go home. Varya can't study political economy today. Politology. How can we afford it? Don't worry, I'll handle it. We can't spend money other than various treatment. Painkillers, medicine, and new technologies. We also need a car. I need to take her to the hospital. And I also have to get to work. We'll figure something out. What's wrong with your hand? It's shaking again. Have you been practicing? Of course I have, no, but no, I don't no, know no, what's no. wrong stop with this stupid stop hand! It, stop it! You'll wake Varya up. It's all in your brain. You become tense and it gives you a brain signal. It's a defense reaction, you know? I don't want to be a cripple. No one is saying that. You just need more time. I'm a police officer. Shh. I need to be... <coughs> Varya! <coughs> Sergey, get some water. Water? Shh. Here you go. <coughs> I think she's getting worse. That's normal. It happens with chemotherapy. <coughs> it kills not only cancer cells, but also the healthy ones. Shh. All right. Doctors like you always say it's normal, even a fever in the morning. Do you believe me? Answer me. Well, yes, of course. Well, now I am telling you, everything will be fine. She has calmed down now. 
Let's go. Come on. I'll stay here for a while. Okay. Is there something wrong? Nothing. It's the second time I receive a text saying that I won five million. That's like some kind of miracle. I don't believe in miracles. Did you take part in any lottery? I don't know, but six months ago I answered some questions. Who was the author of the book, Gone with the Wind, and so on. Some questions are actually nonsense. I had nothing to do at work that day. Could it be that lottery? Maybe it is. I don't remember the link where I found the questionnaires. Can you imagine? Five million? <laughs> Listen, what do they want from you? Do they want you to go to their office? Are you going to stop by on your way to work? I don't know yet. I am sleepy. Mm -hmm. Hello, good morning, Mr. Zatov. Good morning. Did he come out yet? Oh, no, he didn't. Yeah. Hi, buddy. Nope. Everything's fine. I'm telling you. I'm fine. I've just... <coughs> Look, caught a cold. Mm. <clears throat> Somebody is here to see me. I'm busy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't worry. Everything is okay. Yeah. <sighs> I told you before that I don't like the sound of your voice. Well, Why are you such a brat? <clears throat> I was trying to call you the whole evening, so where the hell have you been? Listen, I'm not a child. Not a child? You know, you called me yesterday and said that you were going to kill yourself. Really? Idiot. Sorry. I'm really sorry I was drunk. You're still drunk even now, you know? Uh, I'm so grateful to you for everything you've been doing for me. You're the only one who believed in me when I went bankrupt. You know, I'm going to be okay. Very soon. Glad to hear that. But I'm telling you, if you do something like that again, I'll strangle you with my own hands. <sighs> hey, what's wrong with your TV? Catherine Svetlov was basically killed right in front of us. She was an Look, honest and uncompromising the person. The world is going crazy. As a reporter, she made outstanding stories about our country. Although the killer wasn't arrested at the crime scene, we, the journalists of our channel, are demanding a thorough investigation. And we are almost certain that this murder is connected with Catherine's professional engagement. <sighs> Excuse me, sir. Is your name Zhukov? That's right, Mr. Zotov. Nicholas. 
Okay, Nicholas. I'm really worried about my friend. You have a right to be. I've seen everything. Please stop by his place in the evening or in the morning. Just check on him and call me if there's an emergency. Will do, Mr. Zotov. Thanks a lot. I'm so sorry. Be careful. Hello, good morning. Hello, how can I help well, you? Well, my surname is Rinsov. I... They're waiting for you. Uh, sorry, but who are they? You will know later. Excuse me, boss. Helena Rinsov is please here. Please let her in. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you. Come in. Hi, good morning. Helen Odensov. It's nice to meet you. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the generous world of our lottery. Please come in, don't be shy. Please take a seat. I understand that you're a bit taken aback about this. Would you like some? Oh no, thank you. I'll have a cup if you don't mind. First of all, it is such great luck that you were chosen. The five million rubles are real. They are yours now. Maybe it's your destiny. I guess there are many hidden cameras. And I will be on TV soon? <laughs> you don't believe me. If this isn't a prank, well... Give me the money and I will go. Only under one condition. Uh, yes, finally you have a condition. I assure you, everything is in your hands. You will have one more chance to actually see that my client's intentions are serious. But under conditions, this chance will be your last one. I still don't get it. What last chance are you talking about? If I want something, please give it to me. But if there are some last chances, then... It's just an evil prank. <sighs> I thought I wouldn't be able to walk to bed. Then don't walk. I'll just carry you there. But you're not allowed <laughs> to lift heavy things yet. You're not heavy. You're precious. <laughs> the precious things don't weigh anything. <laughs> Listen, I want to tell you something. I went to the lottery office. And then? And it's only a prank, just like I thought. Oh, just forget it then. Good night, love. Good night, honey. Don't pick up, please don't. It might be a patient. <laughs> I think this is too much to take. <laughs> you just couldn't help it. Our last chance, our last hope. What if they mm -hmm. really transferred the money to me? Let's see. <laughs> Code? Wow. No way. Uh, uh, hello? Sorry for calling you so late, Helen, but the matter is serious. This is about the money. Listen to me. That is a demonstration of the seriousness of our intentions. I will contact you shortly and explain the condition upon which you will receive the whole amount. Have a good night. This is nonsense. Mm -hmm. But you got the money. Was it only because you answered some questions? Don't you think it's suspicious? We don't know what condition he's going to ask for. I don't think so. You took part in this lottery and left your number with them willingly. So what if they have some conditions? Let's see what they are and if we don't like them, we can just walk away. But then why can't I call him back? 
He blocked incoming calls. Let's go to sleep. I'm sure you remember that everything started with this woman. She had destroyed our lives, everything dear to us. She did it so easily with a snap of her fingers. And even after all these years, I cannot forget it. Yevgenia Zatov, a lawyer at Bristol Bank, was detained today on suspicion of laundering and misusing depositors' money. The management of the bank had organized a financial scheme and withdrew the depositors' money through offshore accounts. As a result, many depositors lost their money. The main police department managed to detain one of the culprits of this bankruptcy, the bank's chief lawyer. It was with Zatov's help that the contracts and all bank transfers to foreign accounts were made. Why is this happening? Sergei, stop panicking. Dad, please leave the room. Sergei, get out of here, please. D do you think that's normal? Yes, it is. It's because she's reacting to the therapy. At first, it's always hard. <laughs> Careful. Fire. Shouldn't we take her to a hospital? Both of us are going to work. The doctors can look after her. And you too, right? Take me to the hospital. Otherwise, we'll go mad. I only have one father. And I don't want a crazy one. Very funny. Uh-huh. Great joke, huh? Water? Mm -hmm. Bring some water. Water. Just a second. Yes, water. Better? Mm -hmm. Breathe. Ah, oh, great. That's all we needed. Your car just can't stand people with cancer. Don't be ridiculous, please. I'm serious. Mm-hmm. Apparently, we have a unique aura. In the final two months of her life, my mom used to jam radio signals. We laughed so hard. I switched the radio on and it stops working. <laughs> that was really fun. Imagine we were laughing all the time while she was dying of cancer. <laughs> Sorry. That's why I remember her being in a good mood. Varya. Varya, come here. No, no, no. You don't need to worry. No. I wouldn't let that happen. I won't let you die. We are going to laugh together. We'll have pillow fights. And we will eat ice cream until we are full. Hi, Dennis. Mr. Sergey, nice to see you. Listen, I have a favor to ask you. I'll owe you one. Uh, what favor? Here is the account number. I want you to find the owner, his name, address, and bank. Uh, why do you need it? Is it personal or business? Does it matter? Well, I have to know if this is urgent. You see, uh -huh. I've been working on this case. Oh, you're back in the field? Well, good for you. I'm slowly trying to. Basically, Dennis, my investigation isn't official, but we will benefit from it. Got it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, there you are. Well, how is she doing? Well, her state isn't stable. I understand. You were right to bring her here. Let's see how she fares tonight. She's getting weak. Tim. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi. How's Varya? Well, right now she's sleeping. Um, can I sit by her side? Sure, let him stay. Mm -hmm. Come in. Young lovers. First love, I guess. <laughs> Let's go. Tim, I'll be back. Mm -hmm.
Unbelievable. I can't believe this. To Major Rensov. Good morning. Good morning. Sergey. What's the matter? Uh, Is it Varya? No, she's fine. You don't like coming here. <sighs> Sergey, I have to kill a man. What? We need to forget this ever happened. No, honey. This is not a joke. We have to know who's trying to manipulate you. Does it matter now? This is already creeping me out. We need to understand if they chose you randomly or if something else is happening. I'm scared, Sergey. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. But we have to find out what kind of game these people are playing or else they won't stop. I think we need to tell the police. What am I? I'm police too. What I meant is an official complaint. But you know... Tell me. In the morning before I got the letter, our car died again and... I took that money and left the car at the car repair shop. I and Varya went to the hospital by taxi. At that time I just thought, what the hell, I... I want that money. That's okay, honey. We'll figure it out. Yes, Don't worry. Everything woman. will be fine. Later on they took the case to the city department. Hello. Hello. What are you doing here? Hello. Hello. Hi. We haven't seen you for ages. Well, how are you doing? I'm fine, Igor. Just dropping by. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I have to go. Don't forget to call me. Yes, of course. There's his car. Yes, I see it too. We aren't allowed to smoke anywhere. A healthy lifestyle is trending now. Don't smoke then. It's really bad. Helen, are you okay? You look a bit tense. I... No, I'm fine. Okay, it's really not my business. I know your family isn't in the best place now. But remember, I'm ready to lend a hand if you need me. Okay. Thank you, Igor. Sergey, what happened? Helen, she looked devastated. She's worried about Varya. The doctor says everything is okay, but... <laughs> Just the other day, someone asked me who I thought was the most beautiful monster in Monstropolis. And did you know what I said? What? Well, I said... Sully. <laughs> oh, Mike, you're not making sense. Sully? Oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I meant. Well, of course he's beautiful with large... <laughs> Let's get started. Uh, an account in the name of Helen Odensov was open online. Mm. Some banks provide such services, but um, right now I can't tell exactly who did it. Uh, the money has been transferred by the company 3Z, which basically doesn't exist at all. 
What exactly do you mean by that? Well, it's present in the offshore corporate register, but it's just often used as a shadow of some other corporations. Well then, what's happening right now? Apparently someone is good at sweeping digital prints. Look at this. They use this technology to protect confidential information, which is called IPC. What's that? Well, information protection and control. Yeah, what does it mean? They protected this information really well, Sergey. This is everything I can tell you right now. The result is... Someone was really careful when transferring 100,000 to some Helen... Helen Ordensoth. Okay, Dennis, thanks for the help. I owe you one. Uh-huh. Well, who is Helen Ordensoth? She's just a relative. Sergey, you thought I wouldn't check? Is she your wife? My wife. And why are you checking her account? Listen now. Don't tell anyone, they'll ridicule me. You see, Helen's a beautiful woman. It seems there was a secret admirer. I think he transferred the money. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, it's all right. Igor. Let me. Igor, listen to me. Put me back on the field. You need more time. I'm sorry. I can't just sit around the office and do paperwork. I need a real case. Sergey, you know how this works. I know my hand is shaking. I can't shoot well. But my brain works fine. Somebody else can shoot for me. Please understand, I need my old job back. I understand. I have family problems. You know that. I think my job can save me right now. So how can I help you? I'll try to do my best to help you out on this. Sergey, we don't have new cases now. The reporter's case, who was strangled with a guitar string. They took it from us mm -hmm. because of her status. Actually, thank God that they did. I get it. You don't want to offend me, right? <laughs> Sergey, okay. I'm just a second-class officer. Maybe I'll put myself to use by doing all the paperwork. Maybe you'll find a real officer to shoot, or you won't. Okay, I can just practice more. That's all right, just sit at your office, Sergey. Maybe you need some qualification for that, too. Oh, of course, that's all right. I guess I need to learn how to shoot again. Right. The main thing that you have to learn is to trust each other. Your mutual assistance and solidarity can help you in the most difficult situations. Now the world seems to you as a source of constant pain and violence. You experienced it from your fathers, your husbands, and brothers, they have proved that too. But the world is what you are. It is deformed due to your past negative experiences and your fears. The world is the people around you. But if you are being surrounded by friends, well then... Where is that woman? There you are! I'll kill you! Ouch, it hurts! Let me go! He suddenly hit me tomorrow. He went past me, got inside. Uh, I didn't expect that at all. That's okay, the girls are dealing with him. It was you! You incited my wife to leave me! You influenced her! Me? She was a normal woman and now... Ah! She became a person! I guess she stood up for herself. Tamara, please hire professional security. I am not fit for this kind of job anymore. Uh, at least let us install an alarm button. Of course we will. You see, the more popular our sender is, the more enemies we have. It's nothing. We will meet them and see them off. Let's go. go now. Good for them. They will Come put on. him in his place. Ah. Yes, the girls will talk to him seriously. Yeah. That was very intense. This is Let's see if Did you see it. that? That is a very good example of what today's topic is all about. Solidarity. You showed it not only to me, but also the woman you don't know, who was beaten by this... this brute. <sighs> ah! 
That's what he said. You should be more careful with what you eat. Politology, in other words, political science. It studies the historical political systems. Their features and mechanisms of their structure and development. Why are you standing there? Shh, look at them. Political science exists as an independent method since the end of the Middle Ages. How long has he been here? Modern age, when <sighs> Two hours, or maybe more. Processes with the help of scientific and not religious notions. Is that normal? At the They're in love. So it is. The ordinary citizen that you may refer to as the man from the street mm -hmm. creates a primary mm -hmm. background image of politics. What's that for? Which allows well, you to adapt to for your beautiful eyes and for your endlessly kind heart. Which will then, in turn, allow him to interact with the yes. authorities and the state that are compatible with his own goals. Do you follow me so far? Good people don't get into this kind of lottery trouble. Listen, you know very well that it's nonsense. As a doctor, you should understand. Both good and bad people get sick. I have so many examples from work when innocent people get hurt. I could write a book about it. I know. Listen, I was thinking about your situation. <laughs> Sorry. About our situation. Look, every <laughs> prank, even the most harmless one, is a form of psychological pressure on a person. But a prank is just a bad joke. Yes, but you see, Usually, the person on whom they pull the prank on doesn't know that. They will try to make this person believe in a lie and then watch for their reaction. I mean, their only goal is to show their power and control over their victim. This eventually leads to psychological terror that keeps the victim scared. For example, they are trying to play on your greed. They told me to kill a man. What a great prank. Helen, it's money. I just can't believe somebody can think that a normal person would kill for the money and... Believe me, I know people who've killed others for less. But it's me. That's exactly my point. Imagine how much this person knows about you. Your phone number, your email address, your bank account details to transfer the money to, and just how much money and time it took him. I don't know. Think, Helen. Who could it possibly be? No matter how hard I try, I have no idea. Listen. We've been together for two years. Could it be someone from your past? Have you had any conflicts? Sergei, I'm a doctor. I work in a hospital. I always have to deal with a dozen of conflicts every day. With a nurse that forgot to give an injection to a patient. With a patient that thinks he's been treated wrong. And his relatives as well. They think that everybody here is trying to extort money from them. I really don't know. <sighs> okay. Things will get better tomorrow. Let's go home. Yes. <laughs> that woman hit me really hard. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be fine. Uh, ow, my arm hurts. Tamara, how about... I won't uh, give you more. You earn way more money from me than you do at the theater. Oh, Tamara, I'm warning you. Somebody will bring to light all of your mysterious ways. So what? I'll tell them I hired an actor from my workshop. It's real enough for them. It certainly is. Mm-hmm. These women are scared and helpless. They don't believe in words or themselves. But when there's a situation where they have to protect someone, they start working together. Well, not all of them, but still. Listen, Tamara, I just really want to know why you haven't hit me. Just to, you know, show them that it really is possible to protect themselves. Me? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't bring myself to hit a person, but I wanted to kill you many times. Interesting. But you teach them mm -hmm. to. I teach them to resist violence. Mm -hmm. Do you know where the line is? <sighs> Just leave, Stanislavski. Tamara! They're waiting for you. Good Hello? evening. How may I help you, gentlemen? We're from the court bailiff service. Uh-huh. I see. Let's go to my office. Uh-huh. There's no need to read it all. It's just a standard notice. I understand. Within three days, you have to clear the building or pay the rent. If you're not going to do it willingly, 
It will be done for you. You made yourself surprisingly clear. What did you hope for? Your poorhouse owes a lot of money to the state. Do you at least know what we work on? I don't care. Mm -hmm. The state has to get its money back eventually. Okay, take it easy. I'm already fed up. These freeloaders always expect us to give, 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 but nobody wants to pay up. Well, gentlemen, this discussion is over. I will surely pay all the debts by tomorrow. <clears throat> I'm sorry. It's not personal. It's okay. I have mine too. Hello, hello. Leonidas, where are you? How are you? Hey, buddy. Everything's fine. Really? Why are you breathing like an old steam train? Pavel, you won't believe it. I'm running. Where to? You're <laughs> running from your problems? No, you guessed wrong. I have no problems at all. I finally decided to work out. Can you imagine? Really? Have you tried your racetrack? Yeah, I'm feeling brilliant. I had a lot on my plate recently, and you were right. When you said a person can still change, you were the only one who believed in me. Now I'm gonna start a new life. I'm happy for you. Look, don't freak out again. No, I'm sure I won't. I decided to go out of town for some time. As they say, I have to recharge my batteries and come back. That is great. You sound pretty cheerful. I'm glad to hear that. A visitor? I decided to sell old stuff. And the treadmill, too. Get rid of everything. I don't want things to remind me of my past. I'm gonna buy new stuff. And the best, of course. Uh-huh. <laughs> wow. What a beauty. I feel lucky. <sighs> Good evening. Yeah? Leonidas Marco? Yeah, that's me. Mm -hmm. Did you see, uh, my advertisement? <laughs> well, something like that. I have business with you. <clears throat> Leonidas? Are you making out at the door or what?
He's not the worst person of all. He just pushed me into the abyss. And before I realized it, I hit the bottom. But I was in love with him and I was looking for security. <laughs> like a fool. But he was just playing with me. Until he had enough. Then he sold me out. Hey, take it easy. That happens too. Hmm? And too often. You okay? Unfortunately. Yes. Don't be afraid. Thank you. Sergey, are you okay? Good morning, Igor. I'm okay. Everything's fine. Good morning. You said it twice. Uh, I did? But I'm okay. Really. Yes, and your complexion matches well with the fresh greenery. Sergey, don't lie to me. I'm not your enemy. Igor, e everything's fine. I have to go, okay? Let's go. Helen, please tell me, do I look awful? For someone like you who endures such pressure every day, you look absolutely wonderful. And for a normal person, for a girl? <sighs> he is in love with you. I'm scared. Well, I get it, honey. I'm scared, too. I'm not scared of death. I'm afraid of sweating and of smelling awful. And looking bad when I'm asleep and Tim is next to me. You don't. What if I drool when I'm sleeping? Stop talking nonsense about yourself. Honey, listen to me. If a man falls in love with a woman, her appearance will matter very little to him. Is this love even possible? Yes. Hello, Mr. Zotov? Yes. Uh, I, I need to tell you something. You asked me to call you in case of an emergency. I passed by Leonidas' place to check on him just now. He's been killed. Go and call the police. Uh-huh. I'm coming over. Okay, we'll do it.
Listen up, we have a dead body. Grigorshuk has already gone to the crime scene. You're staying here. You're in charge. All right, stop looking at me like that. I'm human, you know. I'm not a robot. I understand that. You know I saw you, right? Do you really expect me to believe you were just warming up at the crossing? Like you were on your way to gymnastics? I understand I have my restrictions, but please don't dismiss me completely. I'm not dead yet. But I probably will be if I don't work. Fine. Let's go. What are you doing? I'm stretching my sweater. <laughs> what for? <laughs> I don't get your fashion it sense. It doesn't make any sense Hello at all. Hello there, ladies. Oh, good afternoon, Victor. <laughs> well, so, how's our pretty girl doing? <laughs> you're making me blush. <laughs> I told you you're pretty. Mm -hmm. Show me your tongue. Ah. Uh, uh huh. She's okay. I'm yes. feeling better. She slept well, too. Oh, well done. Good for <laughs> you. I'll come by later. We'll chat then, okay? Uh huh. As for you, I need to speak with you right mm -hmm. now. <laughs> Pretty girl. I need to tell you something. What is it? You're a professional, so I don't have to mince my words. Tell me, please, is it bad? No, it's not that. That's not what I meant. A few days ago, we collected blood samples from Varia's father. In the event that she ever needed a bone marrow transplant. Is he okay? Yes. Yes, he's fine. He is. But there is something else. According to the results, Varya and Sergei aren't related. They don't have any common genes. Huh? That's not possible. We checked twice. Stop looking at the body. Look at me instead. Careful, don't stand on it. It's upsetting, isn't it? Oh. Uh, such a tragedy. Can I have a glass of water? Uh, need some help over here? Guys, sir? please bring a glass of water to the witness. Have number now? Uh, of course. Uh, don't worry, sir. We'll call them right away. So you were saying that mm -hmm. you visited Markov yesterday. How about this one? Can you I did, and he was acting strange. Water. Uh, Thanks. What exactly you nothing, do you sir? mean by that? It's just as I said. He was strangely excited. Too agitated, I guess. But you didn't think to do anything? I didn't pay much attention. I didn't think it was important. I'm not a psychic who can see the future. Mm-hmm. All right, Sergei. That's enough. You know, it might be from drinking because lately I've been seeing him drunk. How much does he drink? A lot. He used to drink until he would pass out. He burned his sheets with cigarette butts a lot. But lately, things were working out for him. I could see that. Although I didn't have time to talk to him. The doorman was the one who called me. I came here right away. I can't believe that. Why did he call you? I asked him to look after Leonidas. Such a pity. No fingerprints. Everything is clean. What the hell? Yes, now each crime scene convinces me that hell definitely exists. What can you tell? What can I tell? So far, nothing. Are you able to make any assumptions? What assumptions? I need to examine the body first. Are you done? We'll take you. May I say goodbye? Guys, let him through. Go on.
I couldn't imagine such an end for Leonidas. Things were starting to look up for him. He was able to find hope again. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, I don't know. He was making a lot of plans. <laughs> and he was turning a new page in his life. Yes, I wonder what it was that was written in that page. Now nobody will know. Anyway, thank you. You've been very helpful, Mr. Zotov. I have a favor to ask. Could you please come to the police station tomorrow and answer some additional questions for us? What questions? They will come up with questions when we have at least one version of the murder. For now, the victim is a closed book for us. Who do we look up next? Does he have any relatives? Did he have any enemies? Yes, of course. I get it. You know what? I can tell you about his relatives now. Uh, his distant relatives are in Novosibirsk, but he never had a close family. No wife, no children. His mother died. And enemies, well, creditors. And some suspicious characters who are always around down and out people. When did this all happen to him? When did he become down and out? About three years ago. Everything was okay till he got himself in trouble. Luckily, <laughs> this flat remained. Who needs it now? You're right. Tell me, what are all these holes on the walls for? Hmm? There were paintings. And masks from Africa. Until he spent all the money on alcohol, gambling, and women. He loved women. Sergey! Played guitar for them. Don't try to touch anything up there. I'm off. Yes, of course. Uh, oh! Oh, God. So what, guys? Are you done yet? Let's get out of the way so forensics can do their job. Sergey, can I have a word? You haven't been in the field for a long time. But you have to remember, don't bear down on the source of information. We can't even use his profession as a motive, although they say he was rich. A dead-end case. You're right. These people are always involved in some scam. Why not? He had money and a place to live. What else did he need? What do you think of it, Sergei? Sorry for busting you on the crime scene earlier. Don't be. It was my fault. I jumped into your conversation. Still, what do you think? What can I say? The place isn't easy to enter. There's a doorman at the entrance. Come on, there's an old lady who comes in and out. At my flat's entrance, she's already 90 years old, and the second person is Aigul, who doesn't speak Russian. So anybody can enter and take anything they want. Igor, you said the journalist Svetlov looked like he was strangled with a guitar string? With an item that is most likely to be a string, like that you would find on a plucked instrument. What are you getting at? It's just that I searched Markov's flat and found a guitar with missing strings. Here are the strings. <laughs> You're really something. Such an imagination. Don't you think it's worth a look? <sighs> a lot of people have guitars in their home. Even I have one. Should we suspect all of these people? I heard Zotov saying that Markov loved to play guitar for women. So how could he play without strings? He's not Paganini. <sighs> I think we should check it out. <laughs> you heard about that case we got last night? Yeah, that was pretty crazy. I know. I can't believe he's still got one go. It's amazing. Why don't we try out that uh, hot dog place that you saw? The one that serves cheese, sure. Really? Okay. All right. Igor, shouldn't we check the string, though? <sighs> the murder of that journalist is not our case. <sighs> okay, then. Sorry for bringing it up. Forget it.
Hello, we're here looking for Lieutenant Colonel Igor. You found him, that would be me. My name is Nicholas Izvikov. I'm a journalist from a TV channel, and I have permission from your management to shoot. We're preparing a large story about the murder of our co-worker, Catherine Svetlov. Could you give us your account on this matter? I have an autopsy. Mm-hmm. Tell me, what exactly do you want to hear from me? The case is with the city department now. I know that, sir. Uh, the thing is that you were the first officer there at the crime scene. That's why it would be really interesting to hear your opinion. And to get first-hand information, so to speak, sir. I don't really have to say anything to but you. But please do, sir. The camera's on right now. Why don't we talk in the office? All right, we can continue our discussion here. No camera. If I told you what I really think about the murder, or about the killer, it would only end up being censored like in any other channel. Isn't that right? Can I say that in my story then? I... Just give me something, please. The victim was strangled using a guitar string in the restaurant toilet. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I was there and I saw it, and your people even interrogated me about it. I remember that. Well then, tell me what you know. Tell me what you know about the alleged killer and his character, and what his actual murder weapon was. Look at him. Using our professional vocabulary. Chief Osadji, can I cut in? You want our comments on the case? First of all, we express our deepest condolences to you and your network, as well as the relatives of the victim. Secondly, this is no longer our case, but we will cooperate. Um, you should understand that we can't disclose all the information to you, but we have reason to think that this murder was premeditated because no one usually carries around guitar strings in their pockets every day. Right, Chief Osachi? Therefore, the killer had it all planned. He did not choose his victim at random. So why do you think he chose her? Uh, listen, man. You can get this information at the city department as well. All right, we've had our nice little chat, but that's all we can really tell you for now. Thanks for your understanding. Goodbye now. <sighs> that guy just now doesn't look too happy. Of course he wouldn't be. They're not liked by the city department. <sighs> Thank you, Sergey. I get pissed off when I see them. They're always irritating. No problem. I really mean it. They're always twisting the facts. What about the string? Sergey, will you just drop it? You know it's just nonsense. It's not nonsense, it's intuition. Let me check it out. I can bring it to the experts of the city department. I'll talk to the doorman, too. Well, it's a good thing that you can keep yourself busy with something like this. Check the doorman, but as for the string... <sighs> fine, fine. Do it. Great. Thanks, Igor. I'll just do the paperwork then. <laughs> Igor, I just came out of the city department, yes. I'll visit Varya quickly at the hospital and then go speak uh, uh, to the doorman, Zhukov. Okay? Great, thank you. Hello, where is uh, Varya? Uh, she's at the treatment session. Dr. Helen is probably in her office in the internal health department. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. Good afternoon. Oh, Sergey, come in, please. Uh, Helen will be right back. Okay, thank you. Have some tea or coffee, if you want to. Oh my god, Sergei! What is it? Uh, I didn't want you to find out like this. This is nonsense. They checked it twice. 
Sergei, listen. Despite the truth, it doesn't matter who the real father of this wonderful girl is. It really doesn't. You always believed her to be your daughter. And she is. Let me pour you some tea, okay? I have to go. Sergei, Varya will be back soon. Later. Later. Hello, it's the police. I'm here to talk about the incident. Come in. Listen, why do you ask such questions? I didn't spy on him. I wasn't close to him either. Oh, come on. You sit here all day and night. You know all the gossip. You see everything. First of all, I used to work days after 3 p.m. Now I'm working two days in a row, replacing Amir. He went to visit his relatives. Secondly, what gossip? People have been living here for decades. It's department housing. New dwellers are rare here. If a dweller dies, their offspring move in. Markov bought this place from people he knew well too. I want to know what he was like. Did he have any hobbies, for example? He is dead. That's all. What do they say about the dead? We either speak good of them or nothing. Except for the truth. Yes. What? The original phrase is, about the dead, we either speak good or nothing except for the truth. Interesting. Nothing except the truth. <sighs> okay then. Who can I hurt with my words now? He was a usual man. Had some business, this and that, buying and selling. Then he started drinking and went bankrupt. We already know that. Is there anything else? Different women came to visit him. He liked them. So they were frequently here when he still had money. He loved women. Women loved money. And? And then? Then what? He left them. Vodka became his girlfriend. How come? What had happened to him? People don't usually break so suddenly. How should I know? Don't be so down on yourself. You know everything. No, I don't. Not at all. I know nothing about psychology. I'm not talking about psychology. I'm asking about what transpired. I really don't know, sir. That's the truth. <sighs> what do you have there? Surveillance camera? Uh-huh. Why didn't you say so? <laughs> you didn't ask. Well, is it working? Yes, it works. Uninterrupted every day. And so Snow White was left all alone in the forest. She looked around her with fear in her heart, not knowing where to go. She walked on sharp stones, made her way through thorny thickets, and hid from wild animals. She was already completely exhausted, but then she saw a small, elegant house under a tiled roof. And then Snow White stepped inside. The house was swept clean. Everything about it was tiny and beautiful. On a table covered with a white tablecloth... <laughs> on a table covered with a white tablecloth stood seven... <laughs> Are you? Varya, what's wrong? Varya, my dear, what happened? Somebody help! Come quickly! Varya!
Good morning, Mr. Ivanov. Good morning. Come on, Chief. How much longer will you take? I've already smoked my lungs out. Hey, don't you hear your phone ringing? Aren't you going to answer it? Hello, Helen. What? Understood, I'm coming. I have to go to the hospital with my daughter, but I will be back. Okay. How is she? Is she all right? Tim, she's fine. Go home. I can't. Tim, just relax. Sit down, please. she die? Stop it. No. My brave wife. <laughs> I wish I could be as brave as you. I'm not brave, Sergei. I just know that in this life nobody is safe. And we need to do everything that we can to protect each other. I've seen so much evil in my life. Criminals, and their shifty lawyers, corrupt officials, running our government. I've lost faith in the goodness of man. But why her? Why Varya? Why not them? Well... My little daughter is so... she's so sweet. My little girl. Of course she's yours. She's yours and she's mine too. I know that it doesn't matter that I'm not her biological father. I'm still her father. You're the real father. <sighs> She'll never see this, right? Never. <sighs> Is it him? Yes. Who is Dmitry Zhilin and why do I have to kill him? Tell me, why does it have to be you? Why are we even talking about it? Try to remember some things from your past, from your previous life. Was there anything... unusual? I found an article on the internet. Oh, this story is really bad. The author is right. Back then, I was working as a paramedic and was called to a young woman who suffered from bad internal bleeding. Who called for help? A neighbor. She was the owner of the house where this girl rented a room. The house was... <sighs> old and half decayed. In the suburbs. It's like a Naya Street. Anyway, we took her and brought her to the emergency room. They refused to hospitalize her. She didn't have any documents on her. While I was arguing with the doctors there, she got even worse. I said that if they didn't admit her, then I would call the press and tell everything. Good evening. They did. 
But the girl died in the operating room anyway. How is that your fault? It is not. But I'm sure if it wasn't for these 15 minutes of arguing with them, she would have been saved then. And that's what I told the journalists when the story came out in public. What was her name? <sighs> I don't remember. Look, there are only initials there. Peasy. Though the article wasn't about her, but about the neglect of duty. They wrote down that she was a drug addict, but I'm pretty sure that she made an attempt to kill herself. Listen, I don't quite understand it. How is this story connected to today? It isn't. You can ask any doctor, they have dozens of such cases. It's just that the story was broadcasted by the press, that's it. Well, Mom and Dad, were you worried? As parents, it's your job to worry. Well, her test results are within the normal range. Her condition has improved. Mm -hmm. Take her home when she wakes up. There's nothing here for her. The familiar walls of home <laughs> will help, right? Did Tim worry a lot? You know what? Tim needs to be awarded a medal for bravely carrying pale girls. <laughs> There's no such medal. We'll make one. Uh, careful. <laughs> Dad, why are you looking at me like that? I adore you. That's him, right? Yes, it is. Girls, help me! Help me, please! Oh, look! He's chasing her! Stop Damn. him! Oh, oh dear, oh, this gun's down! Uh, okay, yeah. What in the so world? Uh, oh, look, it's him again! I can see that. Let him go. Uh, again? You heard what your chief said? Let me go! I said, let go of me! I just came to talk to her! Let him go. Freaking stalker. I'm an actor, not a stalker. What? I work at the theater. So? Uh, Idiot. That's complete nonsense. Is he following her again? Why don't you stop following her? It's all good. If she's hanging on the phone with Tim, that means she's really okay. I'll have to go to work in a bit. Here's what I think. We need to learn more about these messages. For that, you'll have to go back to this lawyer's office and try to get as much information. And if you have to, make a scene. Try to learn something. Are you afraid? He won't do anything with people around. That's great. As for me, I'll dig for information on Jillian and maybe find a connection to your case. Mm -hmm. <sighs> My sweet little Helen. I'm off. You had that coming for spying on me. I wasn't spying on you. You followed me from the station. I wasn't following you. I was waiting at the distant yard and hiding from your women warriors. And I was wearing the hood so they wouldn't recognize me. I wanted to ask you for some money and you ran away. So that really wasn't you? I didn't follow you from the station. Who was it then? I don't know, maybe a secret admirer. Mm -hmm. What about money? Hmm? Mm-hmm. Where did all that come from, Tamara? Have you sold your kidney? <laughs> Don't worry, I won't take yours. Here, take it. Just promise me one thing, please. Well, I... Promise me you'll change your life. Yes. 
Here. Who is she? I don't know. That was her first time here. At least, on my shift. What do you do when someone you don't know comes to visit? Well, as a rule, they call the house directly or tell us the house number. Usually we don't ask too much. She came and told me she needed to see Leonidas Markov. Why wouldn't I let her in? Good day. Good day. Oh, the hero has arrived. Why is that? It appears your theory about the string was correct. The one that was used for Svetlov's murder and the one you took from Markov's guitar are from the same source. They have the same metal particles and skin microparticles. You were right. So whose skin is it? ba 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 bum It's from someone we already know. The skin belongs to the murdered Leonidas Markov. No way. It's a match. Our colleagues are already pressuring me for the source of this new breakthrough that we have. What do you think I should tell them? That our Sergei had a feeling? <laughs> That's right. So now, you should really stop hiding behind these medical certificates. You were and still are a professional. I'm not hiding. Look at this. I have here this picture of a possible suspect. Here, go and take a look at it. What the hell is going on here? Markov kills Svetlov and then gets killed by this mysterious woman in the photo. What's this about? How can I help you? Good morning. Good morning. There used to be a law firm here, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, there was, but now we're moving in. What can we do for you? Do you know where I can find them? I'm sorry. We can't help you with that, lady. We will only sell snowboards here. Come by, if you want one. Thank you. Goodbye. 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 Hold on. They left us an envelope, right? Oh, that's right. Just a moment. Uh, are you Odin stuff, Helen? Yes, that's me. I'm Helen. Oh, Helen, they left this for you. Here you go. Who are they? The previous tenants. How did they know I would come here? How should I know? They described you to me as a serious woman. They gave your name and said you'd definitely come by. Who exactly? The secretary. Sorry, what was the name of the firm? Uh, Paulina, I think. Paulina. Good morning. Good morning. I have an important letter to Paulina Firm. Paulina Firm. Oh, here. They moved up. Uh, then what should I do with the letter? Well, I wouldn't know. It's important. It's an official message. If they don't appear in court... Uh... Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know who was responsible for the keys? Maybe for the fire protection, or maybe the secretary? There has to be information. Oh, here. The signature of Lydia Murashov, oh. the secretary. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.
Sergey. Uh, can you come out, please? I'm sitting on the bench. Uh huh. Look at this. Yes, we're working on this case. Why are you here? This woman was coming out of the lottery office when I was coming in. Wait, this is the photo from the surveillance camera. Was this woman at the lottery office earlier? Yes. What is the connection? I found out something. The name of the firm and the secretary. I'll go find her. Maybe we can learn more from this woman. That's not all. What else? Look at that. What the hell? He knows everything about our life. He's watching us. about her goal. She created a women's help center to help victims of violence. You will agree that this is important work. But for women such as myself, this center is the only hope. Everything started out well until her goal became much more important than the person. Just how did this information get into this paper? My district. My district, more like ridiculous. Yes. <clears throat> it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good? It looks damn bad. I saw this footage. You saw? Why didn't I see it? I get it, I failed you. 
Igor, just please, don't relieve me of duty. Why didn't you remove it? I didn't make it due to family circumstances. All right. It's no use crossing swords now. We need to fix this. Or else we would end up looking like complete idiots. Only the doorman could have done it. He said he had no one to replace him, so it must have been him. What for? What's in it for him? You know what? You'd better squeeze him and this paper here too. And if that doesn't work out, drag them here. He won't be easy to scare. He looks tough. But I promise to do everything. Apparently, the information leak had occurred before I went there. I see. You go and see that doorman. Go immediately. I'll go to the precinct first, then get down to it, all right? All right. I'll tell the tech guys to check that woman in the database. I gave them everything yesterday. I'll go drop by and ask them. Dennis, I beg you. For you, it's nothing, but it's important for me. CJSC, Polina and Dmitri Zhilin. Why do you need it, Sergei? Dennis, didn't I tell you? I have some marital issues with my wife. Yes, but I don't like how you want it off the record. Why? What's wrong with it? Can't you check the database yourself? I can, but I need more than an address. I need their files and some connections. And also, I have an urgent work task. And I don't? You do too. By the way, here you go. Try not to get bored. Run a facial recognition on this and maybe find something within the limits of um, the investigation. I'm counting on you. Hmm? Gotcha. As for the nature of the victim's injuries, I can clearly state the following. The first wound was in the groin artery. The second one, abdominal cavity, with an object that can cut and pierce. A knife. With an object that can cut and pierce. There's all sorts in my practice. Even a ruler can cut. That's the reason why, until I see the weapon and the detailed 3D imaging, I will assume it, it was just an object that can cut and pierce. A knife. The attacker had very specific skills, and knew that our victim would bleed to death. But the wounds are not deep. It even looks like a child did it. The attacker did not have a big muscle mass or physical strength. Could the attacker have been a woman? That is a possibility. <sighs> What's this world coming to? Here, and here. Congratulations. Now, when a maniac grabs you by the neck, grab his arm, good, and hop, hop. <coughs> Excellent. Now it's your turn. Uh -huh. Stand over here. Now the grip and hop, hey, and hop. <sighs> Lisa, can I have a minute? Yes, of course. I'd like to see you in my office. Once more. Uh -huh. Held from behind, hop. 
Now grip up and flip. Uh, Done. Uh, mm -hmm. Good. Stand there. Mm -hmm. Shoulder grab. Swipe down. Then knee. Uh, one more time. I have a proposal for you. Okay, what is it? I want you to take over my position. What? I need you to leave the center. Are you going somewhere? For how long? Yes, there are some personal matters that have come up, and my grandmother badly needs my help. Oh, like taking a vacation? Mm, something like that. And you'll be back in 30 days? Highly unlikely. Tam, is everything all right? Everything's fine. It was hard, but I made it. Lisa, I just bought this facility, and now it's the center's property. So you won't be having any problems with any bailiffs or anybody else. You're keeping something from me. You know that this center is my whole life. You're the only one I can trust. You have no idea what I sacrificed for it and what I had to pay. And you shouldn't. <laughs> I know you won't let it fall apart. Because just like me, you hate all of those bastards who had been torturing and driving us women to suicide. You'll be fine. Tam, you don't need to worry. The French philosopher Jean Baudrillard called the modern times the age of hyperreality. The superstructure defines the basis. What's a superstructure? The superstructure is a state and law, as well as morality, religion, and art. With that said, Baudrillard <sighs> believed that labor does not actually produce, but only socializes. Mm. Varya! I'm home! Yes? <laughs> oh, Tim, hello. Good afternoon. Um, would you two like some tea? Yes, we would. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 May I help you? Good afternoon. Major Odinsov, operating team. I'd like to ask you a few questions. May I come in? Come on in, please. Thank you. What is surprising here, young man? They hired me, so I only did my job. Who hired you? I can't understand why you're so interested. There was this very strange gentleman. He's Ilya Tyshinsky. He invited me to a job interview and hired me. Tyshinsky. And why would he hire you specifically? Oh. My resume is posted on headhunting sites. Well, at my age, there aren't many job offers. You have to understand. So I reply to all job offers. Well, most of them. There are some jobs that I won't do. So you pick this job, not them? Well, something like that. That's right. So you chose this job? I chose this job. And I am telling you, I passed the interview. And I get hired. And then... Dushinsky told me that the work I was supposed to do had a short time frame. So what work were you supposed to do? Well, as usual, I would welcome visitors, maintain the books. Were there many visitors? Not really, just five or so. Is there a way to learn their addresses and contact details? No, there isn't. It had been agreed in advance. I would be the one to welcome the visitors, but only Mr. Ilya Dushinsky would make appointments with them. Perhaps you may have kept some records? No, no, there were no records. That was also a part of our agreement. Once done, all documents must remain at the office after the job completion. Weren't you surprised with that? Young man, I survived the 90s. Hardly anything can surprise me anymore. 
I see. Uh, could you describe for me that Tashinsky of yours? Sergei, do I remember correctly? Why are you being so condescending? That of yours is not mine, nor yours. <laughs> He's just a person. All right, all right. I Could you please describe that person to me? <laughs> he was relatively young. Compared to whom? Well, compared to me. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Murashov, I'm begging you. Could you be more specific? Well, I don't know. He looked like he was around 50 to 55 years old. He was skinny. Oh, he also had those funny <laughs> round orange glasses that he was wearing. And the mustache. A nice head of hair. There must have been something else, though. Oh, yes. He was wearing this marvelous perfume, and he's a lion. He's a social lion. Mm-hmm. Perhaps you could remember some unique traits he had, like his behavior or maybe some distinguishing features? Well, I don't know about that. Oh, I think he has a birthmark. He, he's got a birthmark here. <laughs> and also, he does like that, like that, like that. A habit? A nervous tick? I'm not sure, but he does it sometimes. To be completely honest, we sat in different rooms, so I wasn't watching him all the time. Mm. I see. It seems the lawyer is either a child or a dead man. I don't even know who to choose. Oh, no, he was afraid so much as to look at me. I understand that he got his appendage removed, but they didn't remove his brains. <laughs> <laughs> I said to him, Sergei, you need to walk more to avoid adhesions. I thought I'd give him a hint to take a walk mm -hmm. with me. But he said to me, well, yes. The surgeon told me I already walked. <laughs> that just like that, he would say that. I even swapped shifts with my colleagues in order to stay with him longer. Oh, he... was he shy? No, no, no. Turns out he was embarrassed to walk in sweatpants in front of me. <laughs> As if he doesn't parade them now. Well, now it is. Another thing. When a man wants to be liked by a woman, he dances a different dance. Right, Tim? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Dad is calling. Say hi to him for us. Yes, Sergey. We hey, just... Dad! I love you, Dad! <laughs> <laughs> Hear that? We were just gossiping about you. Uh, mm -hmm. me first. <laughs> yes, now I know for sure that there is a connection between the murder of Markov and that journalist. It appears everyone who entered the office of that lawyer was doomed. Including myself? Yes, Helen, including yourself. The How are you, Sergei? The secretary said there were five people. So I'd like to seriously ask you not to go outside if you don't need to. Sergei, how can I not go outside at all? I have my shift in three days. And then again, what if Varya needs something? Food, medicine. I can't hide forever. It's not forever. You won't have to hide for long. Just until we know it's safe. Sergei. Sergey. Helen, come have some donuts, or else we'll eat them all. You can go ahead. Enjoy your meal. I'm already full. You're driving me crazy. Everyone is doing it. Absolutely everyone. It's like a big conspiracy. Give me a break. You'll live a long and happy life. The only thing I want to know is how a journalist got hold of CCTV footage from the victim's house. Listen, mister. Well, well, sir, I don't know what your rank is. Major. Major, sir. There's a law that protects our source. Yes, and? The first law that crosses my mind is the one where you cooperate with law enforcement. You are binding my arms and legs here. We are the media. We have agreements. With whom? What agreements? You don't understand. It's something like a bank of mutual service. If I reveal, 
the source to you now. Then later on, I won't be able to count on that source to. Listen carefully. If you insist on wasting my time, then don't expect to count on anything anymore. Obstructing the investigation. You know that's a crime. Got it? Tell me. Well, colleagues. Hmm? From the TV. Mm hmm. It's from Nikolas Isvekov. Why didn't he use it himself? I don't know. He said it would be more convenient. I see. Bank of mutual service, huh? Being a little naughty, aren't we? Well, what's the difference to you when others do the work for you and you get to enjoy the results? Mm-hmm. It appears we've gotten the same results. We must be drinking water from the same spring. I don't understand what you mean. <sighs> Why does everybody think that the police force is full of dumbasses? <laughs> Isn't that the case? Listen, Izvikov, I have no idea who put that thought into your mind, and I don't know why you're so hostile. We're not enemies here. We both want this world to be a better place. Listen, I don't believe a single word that comes from your mouth. I loved Catherine. Yes, she didn't care about me, but I continued to love her. And I... The police don't care, do they? I can see that. That's why I will eradicate that evil on my own. You don't know me at all. Why are you smearing everyone with the same paint? They're all the same. A report about Catherine will come out soon, and then we will see who's smearing who with which paint. Your initiative can obstruct the real investigation that we're doing. Then sort out your investigation yourself! <sighs> all right, Izvikov. Let's handle this like adults. Both of us have vested interests in this case. And believe me when I say that I can be ruthless too. To the point that the report about your beloved, pardon my mistake, your colleague will not see the light of day for another 20 years. You will not dare do this. You don't say. You want to try me? I do have some ideas as to who supplied you with the CCTV footage. But why did Markov's murder attract your interest? That is the question. But then again, Dorman Zhukov was not running around the city, offering the videotapes to everyone. Well, of course not. Nothing of the sort happened. Stop putting pressure on me. By the way, your information center is leaking info. Journalists use it in their work, take what they need. I read about this Markov guy and it blew my mind. He was sitting at the bar making eyes at Svetlov. Then he left and they found Catherine murdered in the bathroom. Afterwards, that man suddenly got knifed. Don't you think that it's very interesting? Yes, that is interesting indeed. That's what I'm talking about. Hello. Good day. Hello. Good day. Good day. So, uh, what's next? Nothing much, really. You'll have to forgive me for poking my nose into other people's business, but I believe that if you are looking for some clues, you'd rather look at the recent lifestyle of Leonidas. Are you talking about his debts? Exactly. Well, you've already talked about it, Mr. Pavel Zotov. <laughs> well, forgive me. Being called here on short notice, I really couldn't come up with any other versions. I'm afraid there are people who can kill their bad debtors. Have you ever met any of them? <laughs> God was merciful. But I heard stories. Markov told you? You know, he asked me to pay his debt for him this one time. He seemed very afraid. Did you pay for him? What else could I have done? <laughs> Damn, I sent scary. a letter to your address. Just sort out all the Could you please describe the man you paid your money to? Of course. Mm-hmm. An unpleasant-looking skinny man. Weird thing about him. Either Kid a gangster or, or a very pimp. large sums of money on a regular basis. From that CJSE Polina. 
Here, over here. Hmm. Paulina. Mm-hmm. Well then, thank you for your time, Mr. Pavel Zotov. You're free to go. If you need me, just give me a call. See you later. Have a nice day. Yes, have a nice day. I'll get going then. Hmm? All right. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, my friends. Can you share with me the secrets of the Spanish court you have? I knew it. Well, I didn't. Dennis is not to blame. It was my request. And what request was that? Could I please tell you in private? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm listening carefully. Well, I have issues with Helen. Or rather, we have a problem. So, her ex has appeared. Terrorizing us. What do you mean he's terrorizing you? How serious is it? Nothing critical, but insufferable. He's calling, texting. Like, I love you, I can't live without you. Come or I'll kill you and myself. Do you need help? No, so far, it's under control. That's exactly why I needed certain information from Dennis. <clears throat> well, if you need me, just call. Your Helen is a beautiful woman. Yes, if I do, I'll call you, of course. By the way, about women. The forensic experts said that judging by the wound's nature, it's highly likely that the killer could be a woman. Well, we need to find out who she is so we can do a great job. Well, yes. <sighs> All right, I'll take a stroll to the buffet. I'm all stiff from sitting at this desk. Can I get you anything? No, it's okay. Will there be a massacre of the innocent? You live for now, so be useful. Simply show me what Sergei asked you to find for him. Hold on just a sec. It's Polina. Lower. Founder Leonidas Markov. Have you ever met him? Mm. Do you know this Zhilin guy? Mm -mm. Helen, think carefully. I don't know who he is, except that I have to kill him. All right then. I wonder why this guy Dmitry Zhilin is receiving money. Something like a salary from Markov. And how could the firm founded by Markov have been involved in the murder of the same Markov? That's a good question. Well, the dead won't answer, and we don't have a live one. Look here, look here. It says that the firm shut down its operations. Now that's rich. Yesterday? Markov's already dead by then. We must find out about this Shilin as soon as possible. Well, the next agenda is you killing him. You won't do that, right? Sergei, stop joking around. <laughs> Helen... What else can I do? Don't you worry. I won't let anyone hurt you. Let them try and they'll see. I'm not afraid. Sergei, the umbrella? Take it just in case. I told you that he was coming. Good afternoon. Oh, Timothy, you're on time as always. And so, oh. you'll be in charge here. I'll take care of her for you. He sure will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right. Lock the doors and windows. Don't let anyone in. Mm hmm? Mm hmm? Mm hmm? See you.
Can we really trust that guy with Varya? Of course we can. He was able to carry your daughter up the stairs in his arms when she felt sick. But they're still children. Mm, children. Children that grow up so fast. <laughs> This is it. Oh, this is it. That's him. Uh huh. I have to get into Jillian's flat. While you go after him. Track where he goes and who he's meeting, but stay on the street. Don't enter buildings, got it? Uh -huh. Right, take the wheel. <laughs> Helen, please be careful and drive safely, hmm? <sighs> Markov. This means he knows him. That's all we got. It was slow. Oh well. Hi. There. Hello, dear. <laughs> so, how much have you brought me today? Here you go. Huh? <laughs> how much? much? Are you yeah. sure the clients are I the problem? What they used I really to hope be. you do, sweetie. Yeah. Let's write this down. I'll make then. it up. Don't worry about it. Ready to order? Um, just coffee, please. That's it. Please mm -hmm. take a seat. Dear. Oh, look who's here. Hello there. Yona in the flesh. Let's see. Here. How much you got? You see? You have to watch and learn. From Milona. Why should I? She's bringing in the most cash. Well, she has her own clientele.
Sergey, listen, it appears he's a pimp. I can't say I know much about pimps, but he looks like it. Yes, Helen, that's exactly it. It's getting too dangerous, so go home now. I understand, Sergey. I just feel that if I keep hiding, we won't find out anything. Perhaps you could call Sachi and ask him for help? What do you mean you won't find anything? We already found out that Markov had been Jilin's regular, and that's what he was paying for, and perhaps the woman that killed Markov was a former prostitute. What doesn't add up, though, is this firm, Polina. Why did it shut down so suddenly, immediately after its founder passed away? I'm going to Markov's apartment now. I'll try to see whether we missed something the first time we were there. Go on home, Helen. Go home immediately. It's too dangerous. Uh-huh. I, uh, I understood, Sergey. The signal is weak. Helen? I'll hang up. Hello? Huh? There's no need to shoot me. What are you doing here? And who let you into the apartment? Forgive me. I just... He had a guitar. And nobody wants it now. And I needed a string, so I thought I could... This place is sealed off because of the investigation. Do you understand that this makes you the prime suspect? Me? That's nonsense. I couldn't even... Major, sir. Please don't... Don't put it on me. Why did you give it to the journalist? I didn't do it. The guy already knew about the murder. Did he pay you for it? Do you want me to pay taxes for that? <laughs> what was up here? How should I know? I didn't hang it. Looks like dowel pins fitted for something. For what, though? You have a knife? Nope. Paper clip. I wonder what this is. Who is this? Ah, that's Polina. She was a good girl. She kept visiting the dead, and it seems they were... sleeping together. You know. And next to her? There's a blotch. And because of it, I cannot identify the person. <sighs> Polina, Polina. <sighs> Polina again. Helen. Sergey, I saw him get a gun. 
I told you to go home, didn't I? Do you even realize that you are in danger? According to the plan of an anonymous puppeteer, I am supposed to kill him. And Jilin will either be simply defending himself or he will kill someone. We just found him quicker. Damn, Helen. Listen to me. Don't do anything without me, do you hear Sergey. me? Sergei. Listen to me. I'm on him. Helen, go home I'll now. I'll keep you posted. Hello. Oh, hey there. You need a doctor or what? Oh, everything's fine. I just blacked out for a bit. Is that so? There's no need. Just tell me this. Did you find anything on the identity of that woman? Um, no. The system is still running. I'd rather it process faster. See you. Pick up the phone, Sergei. Yes, Helen. Sergei, he entered a courtyard with a gun. The building looks like a kindergarten. I sent you a screenshot with right. an address. Yes, I'm on my way there. Mm -hmm. See you. Good evening. Can I talk to Tamara? About what? <laughs> Regarding love and friendship with mutual benefits. She's not here yet. Will she be here? She promised to come back. She's leaving tomorrow. Her things are here. Uh-huh. Really? I see. I guess I missed her. I'm just gonna wait here. Would you like to wait inside instead? No need. I need some fresh air. Uh, do you even know what she looks like? Otherwise, you could just miss her. That's not happening, sir. Rest assured. Hey. You scared me. So, what have you got here? He's waiting for someone with a gun. Probably his victim. Well, he must kill her. I must kill him. Then someone will kill me. <sighs> Young lady, hold on a bit. Hey, are you Tamara? Yes. Um, I have a question for you. What is it? Just a second. That's the woman from the CCTV footage. Sergei! Young lady, run away! Run away from him! He came here to kill you! Don't move! Let the girl go! Don't come any closer! Put the gun down. Slowly, I'm gonna shoot put her. the gun down on the ground. And let her go, nice and easy. It's you who should put the gun down. I'm gonna shoot her! Calm down. I'll put it down, you see? I'm slowly putting the gun down on the ground. Just don't make any sudden movements. I'm unarmed Don't now. come any closer! Sergei! Sergei! I'm guilty. Calm down. You don't have to do this. 
I killed someone. I Please, don't know man. why. Young lady, don't do this. He was a bad person, but still a human. <laughs> don't run! Sergey! Freeze! Come here! Stop or I'll shoot! Get back here! I said freeze! Or I will shoot! Stop! My life had a lot of happiness and love in it, and then just like that, it ended. Like someone broke a dry branch. When I was a child, I never thought that there was evil in this world. Remember how jolly I was in my childhood? But what if a miracle happened and all the people who had tortured me all this time would just disappear? Tamara, she's not the worst person that I have met. In essence, they're all normal, quiet people. They just kept treading me for some reason. <laughs> What the heck is going on here? Stop this instant! We just thought her for being hot. Did you have to do it this way? Of course. Paulina, come to my office. Paulina, dear, do you understand that you're causing us trouble? But I didn't do anything! Those girls wanted to take my school back from me. I didn't let them. I understand. I know it's all very unpleasant, but you do understand that those girls come from troubled families, right? So what? I'm from a troubled family too. My mother killed herself after my father's friend raped me. Are we trying to measure pain in here? Listen, it pains me so much to tell you this, but we will have to let you go. What do you mean? You need to leave. Why? But where should I go? Go back to your father. You said he was a hot-tempered man, but not evil. I can't do that. Please listen. You are from a wealthy family. And those girls there have never had a fraction of what you have. You still have a chance to fix your relationship with your father. Whereas those girls have nowhere to go. I have to sacrifice one for the greater good, for the rest of the majority. I'm willing to make that choice. So, I am that one. You heard me right. You're on my list now. And what kind of list is that? The list of people who spat on me. I don't know how, but I will definitely make you all pay. What nonsense. I went back to the streets, and then, then I got mixed up with Jilin again.
Thank you. Why did you do this? Why didn't you tell me everything right from the start, huh? And you call yourselves my friends. We both know that we should have told you. But please, try to understand. At first, it looked like just a mean trick, but then... <sighs> but, but right now, it became a case. Frankly speaking, I don't understand how Helen ended up being involved. And how? Any ideas? To be honest, I have no idea. But look, what would you do? You'd interrogate her? You think she'd tell you everything? No. I don't know. I really don't know what to do. But at least you shouldn't have exposed yourself and put your lives at risk. We just didn't know who we were dealing with. But now you already know. <sighs> yeah, now we know. With some lunatic, apparently. The situation only gets worse. Don't scare her. Listen, it doesn't matter at all. You knew everything before me. The criminal is pursuing some goal step by step. Ekaterina Svetlov was killed by Markov. Markov was killed by Tamara. Zhilin was supposed to kill Tamara. Helen was supposed to kill him. Anything else I missed? No, that's it. But in this Zhilin Tamara case, things didn't work out as planned. In any case, Tamara is dead now. If Helen was really supposed to execute Zhilin, then it's possible that someone out there cannot resist the temptation to kill this girl Helen for five million. What do you think? Actually, you're right. We also thought about that. They have thought about it. Sergei, I need to go home now. I'm worried about Varya. Helen, my dear, we both know your life is in danger. Sergei, just... I need to go home now. Igor. Helen needs to go home. Can we provide her security? Hold on. Yes, Dennis. I'm listening. Hello, Mr. Osachi. There's a connection. Uh, the girl named Tamara Satarov is the head of the Center for Support. Well, not anymore. It's already too late. Hey, Lieutenant. Please escort Helen home. Make sure that everything is okay in her flat and be on your guard. Stay there for now. I'll reach out to you. Got it, Mr. Osachi. Keep an eye on her. Mm-hmm. Igor, it's not necessary. I'll drive home. No way. The last thing you need is to get behind the wheel right now. Rest assured that your car will be very safe here. Sergei will come back for it later. Helen, Igor is right. Go now. Go ahead. My bag. I'll just get my bag. Thank you so much. Sergei? Just promise me that you will be safe here. I promise. For real? For real. I love you so much. I love you more. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye now. Okay, bye. destroy a human life in one move, and as a rule it takes more than one step. You know, there are several actions that lead to death, and you have to watch each and every step and try not to do any harm. But if a person befriends the devil, then this friendship will stick forever and ever. Come in. Dimitri, please stop. Now what? I'm begging you. Listen what? to me, I'm begging you, please. I don't want to go there. 
But why? Why are you worried about it? It's gonna be okay, hmm? How could you do this to me? You said that you loved me. Honey, my love for you will remain as it is, even if you sleep with a lot of men. I'm really open-minded. We will make enough money this time for us to live for a month. Now let's go. This is sickening. This will happen just once, I promise. Come on, let's go. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> what do we have here? Fresh meat. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Time for some action, baby. Come here. <laughs> We should inform everyone about Zhilin. He could find himself in some trouble. So tell us right now, you know most about him. His name is Dmitry Zhilin. Year of birth, 1986. Suspected of attempted murder. Did you get that? Mm-hmm. Check the airports as well as the train stations. Understood. Understood. Hello, miss. Where do you keep the documentation? Huh? Oh, uh, she is now in charge of it. What is your name, miss? Uh, I'm Elizabeth. Then why don't you tell us, Elizabeth? Where do you keep it? So that we don't make a mess here. Sure. Please come this way. This is enough. Who the hell are you? Hey, what are you doing? Now I got you, scumbag. <laughs> don't move. I said don't move. Now look me in the eyes. Now look at me. I said look me in the eyes. Next time I will shoot you in the head. Do you recognize me? Do you know who I am? Of course you don't. I said shut up or I'll shoot you! Shut your mouth. I am the father of that girl who came to you asking for help, and you sent her to the brothel. What girl? Who is it? Of course you don't remember anything. You are such a major flesh peddler now, aren't you? There are a lot of girls, but they're at the right age. They come voluntarily and then Do you they... hear me, you dumbass? You see, I'm her father. I don't want to know the technology behind your dirty business, you get that? Besides, I already know everything about you. Where your parents live. Your card numbers. Addresses of your brothels. She was only 17. And after the first time they... Well, you know... It was very awful, Dad. I'm so sorry for telling you about this, but you have the right to know. After that incident, I was begging Jilin to let me go. I was crying like a fool, but he couldn't care less about my tears. He didn't let me go. He said I needed to work to get food and shelter. Do you remember? Who is she? Say your name. P -p Polina. Yes, it's Polina. Please listen, I'm serious to her, uh, I really love her, as you can see, we are in a relationship, a serious one, we really, we really- <laughs> oh. Now crawl as you want, you can't crawl very far. <laughs> It seems all of that happened in this very room. <laughs> Stop thinking about it. Oh my goodness. How will I live after what happened? What are you talking about? What's wrong with that, my love? My silly girl. It wasn't that scary, right? I watched it online. If they did something wrong, I would intervene. <sighs> How could you do this to me? 
You said that you loved me. Yes, I do love you. It was just a job. Where do we get some money? You don't know anything. I can babysit and also clean the floors. Dimitri, please, I beg you. The floors, you say? What floors? If you have this, these perfect curves, that's your capital. Why don't you understand? Come here. Dimitri, I can't. Oh, don't you understand? I'm sick. Now you're sick. Call your rich daddy then if you want, so that he gives us the money we need. I can't do you that. You can't? Then why? I'm so ashamed. So ashamed, huh? <laughs> Listen, why do you like that? Torturing poor girls? You know it's on them. Of course that's on them, sure. Especially my daughter, who explicitly asked to be let go. It was a misunderstanding. I didn't know that she didn't like it. I didn't know that she didn't like it. It was just a misunderstanding. Of course. Please, I'm begging you. It was just a misunderstanding. Ah! Come on! <laughs> I've told you to shut up. Shut up right now. I won't shoot you. Now run away. Run and don't look back. You better start a new life. Do you need money? Here, take it. Just get going then. You better get out of here, girl. You should stop selling yourself. Now go to the police. Tell them Pavel Zotov did this crime. Here's more. Maria D, Alina Y, Svetlana I. Why are there only first names? What's the secrecy for? Mm, well, the purpose is just to protect the women. Tamara thought that anonymity was essential so that no one could use this. You know, there were some cases. Mm-hmm. Hmm. This is her. Who's this? I saw her photo at Markov's and at Jillen's. Polina Z. Polina Z. Private company. Polina, who is she? Excuse me, do you know this girl? Um, I don't know her. Maybe it must have been before I came here. I think she meant something to both Markov and Jillin. My guess is that she's connected to all of these cases. Thank you so much. I'll go home now. I must accompany you to your flat and make sure everything is fine. I'm pretty sure that everything will be all right. But I was ordered to do so. You really think there's someone hiding in the entrance hall? We're not in a horror movie. Well, you know, anything can happen. It's already late now. Go back to your colleagues or go home. Good night. Let me accompany you to the elevator just to be sure you're okay. <sighs> all right, Great. fine. Well, all right. You may go now. You are a conscientious officer. Everything will be all right. Mm -hmm. Goodbye.
Varya? Varya! Uh, is everything okay? Uh, yeah, I guess. Mm -hmm. Did anyone come here? No. Uh, were there any strange calls? What do you mean, strange? Just strange, Tim. Did anyone call, then hang up? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, uh, look, Tim, can you stay here for the night? I will call your parents to tell them about it. Is it all right with you? Uh, I should have let the police officer stay with us. A police officer? Mrs. Odensov, is everything okay? Yes, everything's fine. So will you stay here? Yes, I'll stay tonight. Please don't tell anyone. I live at the dormitory. Yeah, of course. I I yeah, yeah. I remember. Hello? What? Damn it. All right, I got it. What's happening? Pavel Zotov has just killed someone. Who? That guy, Jilin. Darn, Polina Z. She's Polina Zotov. It was right in front of us. Well, of course, now you understand everything. When you have all the pieces of information, right? And I feel like a complete idiot right now. Do you understand? Igor, I'm really sorry. I just didn't want to make it personal. Well, I'm half disabled. My daughter's ill and my wife got involved in this story. I just thought we were friends. You can punch me now if you want. Punch me. There should be some details that I need to remember. What happened? <sighs> Just stay with me, dear. Just stay with me. Guys, be careful. Be careful, please. What's your name, dear? Paulina. Paulina, just stay with me. Whom should I call? Your parents? Please, be careful. My dear, Paulina, please look at me. Please, look at me. Don't close your eyes. Just be careful. Be careful. Come on, Sergey, please answer the phone. We have to go and arrest him. Hi, Helen. Sergey. Sergey, I remember who Polina was. We know too. We're going to make the arrest. Uh, but there's more. Uh... Oh, no. <sighs> <laughs> What's going on? Uh, listen to me, darling. I need to go somewhere. Right now? Well, yeah. You know me. If it wasn't important, I wouldn't go anywhere. Is someone in danger? Yeah, a bad thing happened to this one good girl. I count on you two. Okay? Yes, of course. Yeah. Everything will be okay. Yeah, everything will be okay. Everything will be okay, because Tim is with me. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Love is the most important thing. You know that your mom is acting weird lately. Uh, she's not my... Yeah, right, she's unusual. My mom is unusual. Update. I accompanied her to her house and everything's okay. Okay. Nothing strange? I think not. Right, thanks. Right, let's split up. Sergey and I will go to Zotov's, and you go to Zhilin's. Got it, sir. Here, the address. Do everything by the book. Follow protocol. Understood. It's like he's waiting for us. It is possible. I mean, he's playing big, always raising the stakes. Huh. 
Sergey. I told you he's playing. But what's wrong with this girl? If that's the girl whom Helen was not able to save, then it all makes sense. But what's the connection between a pimp and a doctor? I don't know. Let's find out. Look at this. That's the gray-haired socialite. Hold on, wait a second. Do you remember at Markov's? There were holes in the walls, from paintings and masks. Well? It wasn't his only purpose. Look, he was watching them. He really was. There's a home video. Holy crap. He was sitting and watching another human die. This is not normal. It's not really normal. Okay, what else do we have? Helen. And that's that Polina company. The company is registered under the name Markov. And this is the power of attorney of Zotov that is made two years ago. What does this all mean? The documents were never reissued. Apparently Markov gave the firm to Zotov to repay the debts. Then Zotov could use the banking information. That's the reason why the firm continued its operation even after Markov's death. What a forward-thinking person he is. It looks like he lost a close relative, maybe a daughter. So he swore to take vengeance. Yeah, you're right, but he's the only one who can tell us the details. But where is he right now? Hello there, Helen. Finally we meet now. Hello, Zoltov. I knew that you would understand sooner or later. And only you could understand. I took her from here in an ambulance. Well, nothing's changed. But... Way back then I had no time to look around. Please, come closer. Take a seat. There's a chair.
I bought this house and I left everything as it was before. I wasn't here during the scene that you have described to me earlier. But I was sitting here for weeks, just thinking about how it could have been. You know, my girl, she runs from the brothel and look, she has no one. She's trying to find a place to live and spend some money to rent the shack. Where do you think she takes the money? I, I really don't know. Of course you really don't know about it. She just sells her expensive iPhone, my gift to her, so that she would be able to pay for the shack. And now she buys an old phone for herself. But she doesn't use it to call. She didn't call anyone using this. She just used this to record all of her life story. So was all that just vengeance? I was listening to the whole story of my daughter's life and I thought that I should do something about this. That I should punish the culprits. I've been collecting information for years. And I even found out about the owner of this ruin who rented a room to Paulina. Then why didn't you go to the police? Do you really think that all I want is only justice to be served for this? Then what is it? I want revenge. That's suicidal. Now who can judge an inconsolable father? What on earth can console him? Only vengeance. Do you understand? Vengeance on people who ruined his daughter's life. The first one was that journalist named Catherine Svetlov. She was that young, ambitious witch. My lovely wife didn't do anything wrong. She was just a banking lawyer, and it wasn't her fault that the bank she worked for at that time collapsed. Investors lost their money, the managers ran away, and she was made a scapegoat. Is it because she was the only person who could be detained by the police even though it wasn't her fault? It was hell. After a few days of staying in a cell, she was placed under house arrest. No matter how many times she explained it to them and told them that it was the management who was really guilty of accounting fraud, that all she wanted was to cooperate, but it was all in vain. Her reputation was destroyed. Eugenia Zotov, the lawyer of the Bristol Bank, was detained a few days ago. She is suspected of money laundering and improper use of investors' money. She is now under house arrest. All attempts of the journalists to contact her were unsuccessful. Mrs. Zotov was the right hand of the management of the bank. The fact that she pleaded not guilty in her case is seen as simply deceit. She's been there for a few hours already. Darling, it is understandable. She's nervous. What do you mean it's understandable? We need to do something! What if she... Don't be ridiculous, Paulina. Mom? Mommy? Mom, please open the door! Here, We're worried about wait, you! Wait, take a step back. Honey, my dear. Mom? Mommy? Mom? 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 <laughs> 
How could it be? How could it be? She took so many sleeping pills that it could kill three people. Can you imagine this? Of course you can. You're a doctor. My darling little daughter was holding her dead mother in her hands. And I stood there like a fool, not knowing what to do. That's awful. That is truly awful. With Catherine Svetlov, as any modern journalist looking for sensation, delivered the verdict even before the court judgment. She destroyed the reputation of my wife, killed her, and orphaned my daughter. And she continued living, enjoying her fame. Yes, she is a popular journalist. The burning issues of the day. If only I'd known that the worst things were yet to happen. As a doctor, you must have seen such situations. You know when... a terrible... illness seems to be fought off, having taken its toll, but no, it suddenly comes back again. And now, without any mercy. Have you seen that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. If only I'd known that it would come back. On the other hand... I know. How could an ordinary person just know when he would end up having to face the worst? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening here? <laughs> What's happening here? Dad, you're home. I'm asking you what's happening here. Who are all these people? They're all my friends. <laughs> you can't have such friends, understand? But why, Dad? Don't be ridiculous. Aren't you a great guy? Listen, what's your problem, old fart? What are you doing? Dad, let him go! Let him go! What's wrong with you, huh? What would your mom say? You have no right to talk about her. Don't you even try to mention her, you coward. You walked around all day just outside her door while she was all alone. What else could I do? What are you laughing at, you idiot? I'm asking you right now, get out of here this instant. You should have at least entered her room to say that everything would be OK and just try to comfort her. I did that every day, and I don't understand why you don't remember or you don't want to remember. I've already told you guys, get out of here. You know what? You should have been beside her. I thought she wanted to be alone just for some time. But she... She was dying in that room. She was dying there in that room! And it's all your fault! Your fault! I'm sorry. Hey guys, let's get out of here. Let's go. Because we've been here for too long. Stop behaving like a child. Just let me go. Goodbye. I said stop right now. I said stop. Polina, don't you dare leave. Don't you dare. Go I out of that door and you're never coming back. Okay. Okay. Oh dear, if only I had apologized or found other things to say, but those words were fatal.
Do you have any idea where she went? At first, she lived with friends. Then moved in with Markov. They already had an affair. But he used her and dumped her. Of course. He was afraid that I would know because he relied on me in his business. He was a kiss-ass, a coward, and, as it turned out, a scumbag. It was he who introduced her to Zhilin as if it were a coincidence, and he had nothing to do with it. But in the end, he started to feel remorse. Then he started to hit the bottle, and he sank so low. I started thinking he would spoil the joy of my vengeance. The dream of vengeance destroyed you. I wanted it to destroy me. Because that was me. Who pushed my Polina into the hands of Markov, Shilin, and that fanatic Tamara. You couldn't know that. When she died, I also didn't know anything. She was taken to the hospital without any ID. While they were determining her identity, while the district police officer was looking for me, while this was going on, I received a parcel, not knowing anything. Good afternoon. Hey, Mr. Zotov. I suppose so. Sign here, please. Where? Here, right here. Mm-hmm. Here you go. Uh... Goodbye. police officer called me the same night. He said, are you so-and-so? I said, yes, what happened? Sit down, he said. Just hear me out. You know, he was a good psychologist, this police officer. And then I found out about the hospital and internal bleeding. All the culprits had to pay for this. And I didn't kill anyone myself. They fell prey to their own greed. The only one I had to shoot was Zhilin, but that's just because for some reason one pawn on the board started moving and played some kind of game. Listen, I'm not a pawn and I'm not guilty of anything. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about Tamara, a strange woman she was. And you, of course, you're not guilty of anything. But I couldn't get to that filthy swine from the hospital reception who didn't want to admit Polina. She died because of a heart attack two years later. But someone had to pay for it. That's not fair. You. You should have become the symbol of the unscrupulous medical system in that hospital. I'm not a symbol. I'm a human. And I'm not guilty of anything. Yeah. The vengeance corrodes a person completely down to the ground. And who was supposed to kill me? Nobody. But your only punishment was to live with guilt for killing Zhilin. Moreover, you were supposed to get five million. But you'd live thinking that you were a killer. But you watched me. And you watched my family. You followed me. You should have known I'm not capable of killing a person. Even for Varya? Even for her. I... I'm begging you to let me go home. She's all alone there. No, she is not alone. Of course. You know everything about me. But the one who is at the head of this list of culprits is you. You were in such deep mourning for your wife you didn't notice the state of your daughter. Yes, you're right. All she wants is to be heard. But you started lecturing her. You're right. What? Please, don't do that. Helen! Varya! 
Varya, what are you doing here? I heard everything about your daughter. And I feel sorry for you. How old was she? She was my age, right? You've honestly suffered so much. All by yourself. You know I almost died of cancer. Maybe I will. But you know what, mister? I don't want to see other people suffer. At all. Don't move! Walk, let's go. Go on. Go. Come on, move it. Come on, keep going. Keep walking. I fell asleep and then woke up. Tim told me your mom didn't come back. Come on, let's go. And then I found the note you left for dad in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I'm here. Uh... Sergey, darling. Zotov is Polina's father. He can only be where the girl was taken from. Everything must stop. Here's the address. I called you, but you didn't pick up the phone. So I left tons of messages on your phone. I see. Look, I'm not deaf. Neither is Tim. Over the last two days, you've been discussing some horrible things, and we started to understand what was going on. And then we decided that we should come here. And when we arrived, we heard what all this poor man was saying. Mom, I love you. <laughs> And of course, I love you too, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come here, Tim. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.